Certainly hasn't been that long. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I remembered my password. If you're wondering why it took so long between this video and last... It's just too much fun fading into obscurity. Anyways, I've been working on something during 2022 that I thought was pretty cool. Before I get to that though, here's some context. At the beginning of that year, I made a furry detector on Twitter, where it could detect whether or not a Twitter user was a furry. But one huge misconception I kept on getting was that people thought I was looking at the profile picture. Well, this just isn't true. I used the contents of people's tweets, which meant I could literally tell if someone talked like a furry. But this did get the gears turning in my head. Could I really see if a furry was in an image? I mean, how hard could it really be? Why? I I'm not a fursuit. This is a fursuit. Th this is- this is a fursuit. W why are you detecting me? It's harder than you think. Hi, I'm Zenith. I'm going to make a computer program that finds fursuits in images. To accomplish this, I'm going to be using something called object detection. This is probably something you're already familiar with. You may have seen this whenever you look at a camera and see a box around your face. This tech has existed for a long time, but today I'll be making my own version that can find fursuits. To do this, I'll be using a flavor of machine learning called single shot multi-box detection. I'm not going to get super into the details about how it works, but here's the rundown. It starts by extracting what's called a feature map, and then uses that information to determine whether or not an object with the features we are looking for exists in the image. If the RGB values of an image are the data points describing the light at each pixel, then a feature map would be the data points that describe the attributes at each point of an image. So here, like in this image, here we have a face, and then over here we have some red plastic, and then like right here, a wood grain floor. And those are really the features that we care about in this image. There's nothing else weird going on. So the cool thing about single shot multi-box detection is that it's able to take these features and it's able to find objects that we're looking for at multiple different scales. For instance, a hypothetical fursuit model would be able to detect that this tiny blue guy in the corner resembles the figure of a fursuiter, but also to detect that the rude panda interjecting in front of him is actually a furry face. Different scales, but same results. Now to make this fursuit detection model, all that needs to be done is to get a data set of fursuit photos to train off of. So fun fact, there's this neat website called FurTrack. It's a website for posting fursuit photos, and I can just download all the images from there and label where a fursuit is. For my model, I made three labels, full fursuits, fursuit partials, and fursuit heads. And after labeling these things on about 1100 images, I was able to collect enough data for this model to work. So let's see it in action. Yeah, so this is the part where I say I forgot to record anything for MFF22. Like, I got nothing. Literally, this is the only picture I took at that con. Anyways, in lieu of that, I am not the only person who went to the convention, so I ended up asking Benji from Benji the Bingle Productions if I could use their MFF22 FurryCon video, and they agreed, so here's their video, but with my fursuit detector overlaid on it. So I'm going to say a few things right off the bat while this video plays. This detector is very, very bad at close-up frames, and also just frames that have a lot of things going on. So like if there's motion blur, or any obstructions, or just a lot of faces, you might as well forget it. You're not going to pick up anything useful. Well, that is if you have a high threshold. If your threshold is high, then the detector will only draw boxes around things it's very confident are fursuits. But watch this. If I all of a sudden lower the threshold, and it sees fursuits everywhere. I mean, it's like, sure, good job. You boxed all the furries in this image, but that's really not hard to do when you're at the biggest furry convention in the US. I mean, look, it literally called a Christmas tree a furry. The point is, is that higher thresholds mean less false positives, which is generally a good rule of thumb. It's better to be negative than be positive. Using this model is a balancing act, but I have found that the threshold of about 0.8 or 80% gives good results. Now, of course, this is not perfect, but I think it gets the job done. And honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, the model's only trained on like 1100 images, right? For a lot of other image-based training, you probably need like 10 to 100 times more amount of data. So this is pretty good. Not perfect, but thumbs up. Anyways, that's all I really have to say about this project. I mean, I was gonna make this originally a species detector, but I realized it was way too ambitious of a project. It's something I've wanted to do for the longest time, but hey, maybe that'll be my next video. One day we'll get there. 
Huge shout out to Benji, by the way, for allowing me to use their video. Go check it out in the description below. I also have an interview with them, so if you're interested in that, yeah, go watch that too. However, if you're interested in using this project yourself, I also have the GitHub link down below. All I'm gonna say though is good luck downloading all the dependencies. It's a pain and I'm pretty sure I sold my third born child to get this project to work, but I have all the steps there, so go nuts. Anyways, that's all I got. See you next year.